Alrighty, guys, real quick, let's jump right into it, guys. All right, we back in the uh, Dodge Charger form, okay? A uh, buddy of mine on this form, uh, he had uh, a misfire. He went and got an opinion. I don't know if he paid diagnostic charge or what to get his car uh, checked out. Guys, that's usually a charge in order to get your car checked out. I don't know too many shops working for free. There are people out there that literally think somebody should hover over their hood and their car to figure out what's wrong with it for free. Yeah, the nerve of people, right? Right. Okay. Well, anyway, uh, obviously he didn't like the first guy's opinion, so he went and got a second opinion. Now we here. Okay, let's read this, guys. Um, so I got my second opinion on my Challenger check engine light misfiring situation, and I'm told it's a bad cylinder head. He changed the spark plug, but that didn't fix the problem and did a compression test. It's giving low compression from cylinder three. Pretty much the same thing the dealer told me. I swear, I don't want to pay thousands of dollars to get it fixed. Shooting for a third opinion, then I decide, help, what would y'all do? Guys, let me tell you something about um, um, uh, estimates from so-called dealerships, okay? Uh, this being a 3.6 Pentastar, uh, once they see, okay, uh, low compression, now, it's only there's only so far... Uh, mechanics gonna go when you initially come into the shop remember uh they are allocated an hour to check your car out okay so if they can pull this off surely anybody can pull off uh a uh, compression test in an hour so that might have been included in the diag time now what we can't pull off in an hour is tear down time and basically that's what you need in order to get an accurate estimate guys nobody knows what the hell going on under your valve cover until your valve covers are removed, all right? Yes, that's not included in teardown time. So what we're going to do now, Let's before we get started, let's read some of these comments, all right? Michelle, I had to pay 3 k to replace mine uh, and only had the car two weeks. Now, I'm assuming it's not a brand new car. In fact, I doubt it is, okay? What engine do you have? He's saying 3.5, but I'm assuming he means 3.6 Pentastar. Greg, Craig, I bought a car thinking the rockers were bad. They eat the pillars. Found it to be a piece of plastic fell into the number three runner. Yeah, guys, you got to be careful with stuff like that. All right. Uh, Finn and bro, tell me why I'm having the same problem as of two days ago. Swap spark plugs and coil packs. I ain't being told the fuel injectors are contaminated. Okay. As well, uh, once I swap spark plugs and coil pack, misfire is nowhere near as bad what it still happened. Okay, you got some different problems there, my guy. If you swap coal and plug and your misfire change, then yeah, you got some uh, you got some other stuff going on. What are they coming in under here? I wouldn't say contaminated, probably just clogged. Ah, clogged injectors are, oh, far-fetched, but it's possible. Did they also swap the coil packs to make sure they weren't the problem? I'm sure they swapped the coil pack, guys. It's a, that's a strategy some dealer takes... Uh, go by okay especially if it's easy they will sw swap first of all the scan tool that they use can pinpoint exactly which cylinder is having the problem let's say po302 misfire cylinder two cylinder two and cylinder four right beside each other so it's so easy to swap coil and plugs between those cylinders now you go back to your scan tool if the cylinder move or the misfire move to cylinder four you know you got a problem with that coil and plug all right, but this guy, obviously, they swapped everything. They went so far as to run a compression test. And lo and behold, the compression is low. Now, uh, let's read this one. I had a misfire, and it was my cam wiped out. I narrowed it down to that by swapping the coil packs around, and misfire stayed on the same. Yes, that is the case, guys. If your misfire stays the same cylinder, you definitely got a problem with that cylinder. Now, again, the thing about a compression test, uh, it's telling you, the amount of compression that cylinder is generating but that the amount of pressure can be uh, a little misleading as far as you automatically thinking it's an internal problem that's why i vouch for teardown time guys on a 3.6 pentastar it is important if you're trying to give an accurate estimate on what will fix this you have to offer teardown time to the customer. I had to steer clear of that because I was lo losing business that way. People did not literally want to pay me to disassemble their car and to tell them what's wrong with it. 
okay? Because teardown time doesn't include put back together. Only way, only reason, or only way mechanic putting the car back together is because they approved the job. But once you find out what's wrong with it, you may not have the funds to do it. So at that point, you might have to pay the mechanic to put it back together. At any rate, let me repeat this. The best way to give an accurate estimate on a misfire like that is to offer teardown time. All right, because here's why. Here's what you can find when you move the valve cover. You may very well, well find a collapse, uh, a rock arm fell apart, came apart. Okay, now here's the thing. People will ask you, is it ticking? Uh, no, it's not ticking. Guys, that's the thing. Uh, I had to refrain from asking that. Well, I still ask it, but my diagnosis is not sent around that. Okay, because you can have a collapse or fail rocker arm. In other words, the needle bearings fall out of the roller bearing and now you're chewing in the cams. You can have a problem like that and still not be ticking. Okay, yes. Yeah, so the best way, in my opinion, the best way to get an accurate diagnosis on such a thing is a teardown time. Now, hypothetically, if you tear it down, you see rock arms chewed up. Uh, yeah, you know, you can start clapping your hand. That's likely why you have the low compression. Yes, guys, a uh, broken rock arm can cause low compression. If your valve is not opening and closing it the way it should, it can give off low compression. Now, hypothetically, if you bust open the valve cover and you don't see any failed valve train parts, one could assume, yeah, it's deeper. Which means uh, you need to go further into finding out where is that compression loss being uh, generated at, all right? Now, we have a problem on this Pentastar with exhaust valves pitting. Yes, I replaced countless cylinder heads because of just that. In fact, they extended the warranty on such a repair. That's, that's how you know they know they have problems. They extend the warranty on it. But I'm thinking this car is out of warranty, so you're pretty much on your own, but uh, one or two options, guys. Pull the pull the valve cover and see if valve train parts are, uh, you know, at fault. They're broken. If not, you will likely have a burnt, uh, exhaust valve on that cylinder. You will see it once you tear it apart. You will see a crack right on the outskirt of that valve. I've done a ton of them. Look at this one right here. Yes. Uh, in that case, guys, you will need a cylinder head. Okay. Uh, it was advised us a long time ago. Do not attempt a valve job on this because the problem is actually. In the valve guides, all right? Doing a valve job, you're pretty much uh, lapping in new valves. And, you know, from that standpoint, so valves and seat, you're making sure the contact is on point. But, no, they was uh, they informed us don't attempt a valve job because the problem is uh, with the valve guides and things like that. The valve's not doing what it's supposed to do or even the material the valve is made out of. So, yeah, I wouldn't waste money on a third option, especially if you got to pay for it because... Your best option is to perform or get somebody to remove the valve cover. That's not so hard to do, my guy. Just take the intake off, whichever, whatever bank is on. Take the intake off, remove that valve cover, and look around. If you don't see uh, anything come apart, you can assume it's deeper internal to the head, not the block. It's hardly ever uh, a problem with piston rings and stuff like that. All right? These valve train components or misfires are always upper. Okay? If you tear the valve cover apart and you see broken valve train parts, then yeah, uh, you got to get those valve train parts repaired, all right? So I don't want this video to be long. Uh, good luck to you, buddy, getting this figured out. Uh, again, if you got to pay a shop another $150, $200 for diagnosis, I would cancel that third option. And hell, you, I mean, get somebody, get this guy to get you the second option to go ahead and remove the valve cover. Because let me say this one more time before I go. The best way, guys, hear me out real close. The best way to give an accurate estimate on a vehicle that's exhibiting a misfire and you have done all the initial preliminary things like swap coil and plug, the best way to give an accurate diagnosis before you just consume or condemn the engine or the head, the best way to give an accurate diagnosis is to simply remove the valve cover. From there, you should, like I say, find your problems all right you may not need a head you may need a head based on a number of things that i've mentioned already in this video all right i don't want this video to be long so uh what's his name uh, i can't remember what his name was good luck to you oh chanika sound like a female name 
Good luck to you in finding out what's wrong with that car. I wish you the all the best and get this thing back up and running if you're planning on keeping it. That's all I have, guys. Thanks for watching.